All right, what's up, everybody? This is A7X Fan Event, and welcome to semifinals matchup two, tournament number three. This one is going to be between Alter Abuse, led by the Hai Peng, against Kill That UPS with Angelica. So, this will be an interesting matchup. A treasure Fleet based on getting the Alter of the Loa UT and using it versus an absolutely killer fleet that's been uh, winning some nice games here in T3. So we'll start with our regular die roll, see who goes first. So we've got two English ships in the Dragon Fleet, which is probably what I'll call the Kill That UPS Fleet. Uh, I might just call it the Kill Fleet or the Dragon Fleet, something like that. So they're going to be red. And then the black, we've got two pirate ships, uh, the High Pang and Blade Jewel, in the Ultra Abuse Fleet. So they're going to be the black die by default. So we'll roll to see who goes first here in this matchup. And so Ultra Abuse will go first in game one. So they'll place the first island, but we want uh, the Dragon Fleet wants Isles of Fire. So these are the volcanoes. They can be used only as a wild island. And beginning of his return, the active player rolls a d6 on a result of six, randomly eliminate one treasure from this island. So they want those, they want MIs to be legal. And the Alter Abuse Fleet, um, they don't watch the other, no fleets can like watch the other matchup, so to speak, like from afar. So they're kind of not surprised, but they're, um, they didn't really think about that. They don't really want MIs. They weren't planning on using any. There's a slight chance they'll change that in a different game of the series, but they're going to vote against it. So, um, so per what I've been doing in the tournament so far, we're going to roll off to see who gets what they want. So whoever gets higher will get the island choice they want. Okay. So kill that UPS uh, wins that roll. So we will use, we will see the use of Isles of Fire. So I'm going to spread those out at the bottom here and then grab three random islands for the other uh, three that will be used. So we're basically going to go one to six across the bottom. So per the rules, if there's mysterious islands, or we're technically whenever, but since there are mysterious islands being used, we're going to have the random island choice before placement. So, um, okay, so I'll we'll tribute one first. So they're going to roll off one through six left to right to see which island that they place. So they got a two. So they're gonna place an Isle of Fire. They generally want uh, islands to be as close as possible because their high pink setup lets her move um, LSLS with Micron uh, or LSLS twice with Micron. So she can bounce, if islands are three L apart, she can usually get from one island to another in one move action. So they're gonna try to preserve that here. Um, I think anticipating the other fleet will choose the last island and place it six L away. They're gonna go in the middle of the ocean towards the top to make it a little bit harder to place an island six L away from there. Um, so that being said though, the, uh, the other fleet, the Dragon Fleet, does want islands as far apart as possible, uh, basically to slow any potential UPS stuff. So they don't know what crew the Ultra Abuse fleet has. So therefore, they're kind of, they see the high tank. They can at least see that ship in her deck plate. Um, so they just, we haven't gotten to the place in crew section yet. Even if, even once we do, there won't be any face up, of course, to start the game. So they're actually kind of anticipating that the enemy fleet might be a UPS fleet. It's not, but they're going to kind of assume that it is. Kind of assume the worst, if you will. So they, they generally want Island 6L apart in that case to make it longer, or to make it take longer for the enemy UPS ship to get from one island to another. So therefore, um, they're going to try to, probably going to do a max distance here. So they place the far right island on a 6. Or actually, that wouldn't. No, nah, let's re-roll that. It's one through five, or else it doubles the chances of them getting that island. They got a one, so they'll place an Isle of Fire as well. So that's interesting. Um, I don't know how much this will be gamified in terms of the placement, because the Isles of Fire have to be wild islands, which is kind of a funky aspect of them. Unlike regular mysterious islands, they can't be chosen as a home island. So, um, but I think they're still just going to place it pretty far away from, from the current one, or the first one. So that's 3L, 4, 5, 6. So they're going to go on the eastern corner there. So that's their placement. So 1 through 4, 
go to the second round of Violent Placement. Um, I guess that was the wrong tie to roll, but whatever. So a two. So Ultra Abuse will place a regular island. And they're going to fill in the gaps a bit because they don't want 6L between islands. So we're going to see them filling these gaps pretty good here. So that's 3L from that one. And a tiny bit less than 3L, so I'm going to move it that way a little bit. Just make sure real quick, more than 3L there. A little bit more, okay, that looks fine. All right, so an island pretty much in the middle. And Dragon Fleet, let's place number four. So in that case, that would be the middle one. So we can go one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll place a regular one. And we're gonna go, uh, they know it's gonna be hard to get uh, any island 6L apart, except for the last one. That one would be easy to place 6L away, but they would want that to be the island they pick as the enemy home island. Because they're gonna place the last island, and then probably, if it's this one, they would pick that as the enemy home island if they could get it far away, far away from the others. But that might not happen, so they're just gonna go far away from all the existing islands right now with this one. Place it on this edge. So four, five, six. So you're gonna go on the western edge down there. And so one through three, four through six for Altar Fleet placing their last island. Okay, so they get to pick, they get to place the, uh, the last normal island. So this is interesting. So they're, they're pretty happy about that, actually, because then if they place, yeah, they like that. They got to really think about this, though. Yeah, so knowing that the last island placed has to be a wild island, they're now placing, there's a decent chance that the one they place right now is going to be a home island. Um, they might place it somewhere like over here. I'm thinking about uh, the, the Dragon Fleet is probably going to pick that as the Ultra Abuse home island, uh, especially if they place this one somewhere up here or even down here. They could go like 3L in between each of these, but then they would probably still get picked to go there, and then they would have to put the enemy fleet at one of these. Um, so this is, yeah, the Isles of Fire are going to make this more complicated for sure. Um, they almost, they want to be near wild islands as much as possible. So they, they don't want the enemy home island to be close to their home island. So they might kind of place, they might even place one up in the northeast and then try to force the enemy to place the last Isle of Fire, which will be a wild island, closer to one of these two islands that could turn into a home island so yeah this is interesting there's a lot of ways to think about this and a lot of what ifs but of course as soon as they place one the other what if will be resolved soon after so i'm not going to take i'm not going to take half an hour to figure it out um i just want to make sure they make an informed choice um i guess they could place they could intentionally place this one close to the existing Isles of Fire, knowing that their opponent probably won't pick it as their home island, and then therefore they could pick it as the Dragonfleet's home island. So they might do that. Um, thinking about Northwest, that could be that could be better actually, I think. And the Altar Fleet, they know they have they're gonna be having Hidden Cove and they're going first, which is pretty nice. So they'll be able to jump around. One potential problem of putting the island here is the enemy could, that could then place the last Isle of Fire here. And then they end up with this as their home island, which could get ugly. Um, yeah, this Isle of Fire thing might kind of screw their strategy up a bit. Um, so the enemy fleet will be able to dictate where they start. Um, they could could go like 3L from these two, and then 
Um, the enemy was ah, similar. It's similar to placing it here, though, because the enemy can put them there, and then they have to put their enemy probably here, and then the last Isle of Fire might go, might still end up there. So it's kind of an ugly situation either way. Um, what I like about putting this island close to the one that was placed last round is that it shortens the distances. This whole 6L thing is ugly. This is a huge impasse. It's gonna, I think it's gonna be really hard for the Ultra Fleet to get gold back. They don't, they don't actually have Kevin Jack Sparrow for EPS, so they gotta bring back any gold manually. So I think it's gonna be a struggle. If they put this island somewhere out here, it's gonna be tough to make trips all the way back. And once they run out of food, sack food, sack crew to sack at the altar, if they find it, of course, it's gonna be a journey back might let the other fleet get back in the game if the altar effects wear off. So I think they're probably going to go here, here. In that case, it shouldn't matter because there's going to be an Isle of Fire on either side, basically. So I think they're going to shorten the distances. Um, they realize they might still get that placed as their home island, probably, but um, but at least in that case, they could make this, put the Dragon Fleet there, have that be a wild island and just hit that hard on the first turn. Problem there is if they don't find the altar there, it's going to be hard to get to an Isle of Fire somewhere out and about. So between the Isles of Fire and going first, Ultra Beast might, flee, might already be at a slight disadvantage in this game, but we'll see. Um, of course, if they, go find, if they go first and find the altar, all bets are off. So that so one's about 3L from each of these. It's a little bit more, but... Actually, it might be less over here now. Yeah, okay. All right, so it's about 3L from each of those. Yeah, okay. So I, I think we'll try that. They're pretty wary of 6L uh, to get home with gold, so. So now, last island, we need to roll. Got an Isle of Fire placed by the Dragon Fleet. So they're probably gonna go in the Northeast, I think. Um, just to make this more difficult for the enemy fleet. Yeah, this is a weird, it's a weird setup. This really changes things. Um, it's a weird situation. The enemy fleet, they wouldn't, they would not want Isles of Fire because those that those could eliminate the altar of the Loa without them even knowing too, because you don't you don't see the treasure that the volcano eliminates. So yeah, it's a weird situation where now. The, uh, the kill that UPS fleet is going to be able to dictate that they're closer to the Wild Islands since these can't be picked as home islands. Um, whether the enemy fleet puts the Dragon Fleet here or there, either way they're going to have better access. So I guess one thing the Alter Fleet will have to consider is putting the enemy fleet here, which is ugly for their home island, but if Hidden Cove jumps the high peng out here, she could then hit these islands on the first turn. They might actually do that. Might actually... Yeah, I think she can get LSLS. She could bounce between those. So I think she might do that. This one's going to be placed a little farther away, though. So the Dragon Fleet, I think they are going to stick with that. Try to make the enemy choice hard. And... Yeah. Well, in, in that case, this might actually not be reachable. But they might be able to hit and go here, and then like explore, redock, explore, and then hit that one in the east. So either way, I think that I think that looks fine for the uh, the dragon fleet where they're going to put that island. Okay, so pretty interesting setup, and took some time, but I think that analysis is reasonable. And so we're going to go to train. So. The Ultra Beast Fleet, they go first, so they're going to propose their number first. They're going to propose five terrain place per player. They want fog banks and reefs, and they want they want a reasonable amount of both. They want fog banks to be able to hide from the enemy attack ships on the way back, and they want to be able to reef the dragon if they get the Ultra below it and can fly her straight into a reef. And the Dragon Fleet's going to vote for three terrain. They would like to see some Sargasso Seas because all the enemy ships have two masters less. And 
and uh, it's a little off. So black for the altar, red for dragon. And okay, so it's the five, close roll, but the altar fleet gets what they want. So we're gonna place five terrain per player. So, so we're gonna kinda gonna splay this out in the southwest. I don't, I don't think any of the terrain will be, be placed right there anyway, so. Okay, so probably start with a fog bank. They're definitely anticipating the enemy putting their home island here. Um, so they could try to mess with that based on the terrain setup, but they still want, they definitely want fog in between islands. So they're gonna go with one about right there. And then the dragon fleet, uh, yeah, so they want some sort of yeah, so it's, it's gonna start covering the board with those basically. So we're gonna place one right here. The first train. And then the altar fleet. We're probably gonna place three fog banks and two reefs, I think. That's probably what they'll go with. Um, we're gonna put a fog bank in between these islands. And then the enemy dragon fleet, you're gonna place another Sargasso. And they're gonna plop it um, probably in between islands to try to mess with trade routes. So they don't know where the enemy's gonna go. Uh, with hidden, well, they don't even know they have hidden cove, but they're gonna try to block some trade routes with the seaweed basically. And then another fog bank. Yeah, I think we'll do the third and final fog bank next. So they're gonna put it in between these islands. So it's kind of hopefully accessible from any of those three islands with one move action. That's kind of what they're going for with that fog placement. So, and then from here, here, they could hit either one of those two, hopefully. So then we'll go with, we'll go with the third Sargasso for the enemy fleet, the dragon fleet. So probably place one in between. And this really could mess with the high pangs ability to get from one island to another with one move action. These Sargasso placements might actually uh, derail that pretty pretty intensely that could really be a factor so but even if there were only three train plays if the other fleet got the roll it would be sargassos too so all right so that's three each now we've got two more each so yeah i'm gonna put a reef near the enemy home island so the ultra abuse can already gamify where they think they'll go and where they think they'll put the dragon fleet as a result they definitely think the enemy is going to put them in the southwest. Anything else would be kind of shocking. This would be ridiculous. That would be stupid on the Dragon Fleet's part. I think pretty much without a doubt. Uh, so they're going to anticipate getting placed there. I think they're going to want to place the Dragon Fleet here. They don't know what crew Hyena will have yet. They do see the Hyena and the Angelica in the enemy fleet. So they're anticipating some some attacks. Uh, so, so I think they'd like to place the enemy there. They don't, I don't think, I don't know if the Ultra Fleet, before they place reefs, they should at least consider whirlpools. Um, that would be interesting as heck. They might try that. Uh, they really wanted a reef. They only have two terrain left, so if they place a whirlpool, they do want three fogs. I don't think they would sacrifice a fog ring for a reef. They might pivot. Normally they wouldn't want whirlpools, but I think it might really help them here. I think they almost need it because they only have the one hidden cove. So they place the enemy here. I pang coves here. She can hit one of these islands and that one on the first turn. Try to find the altar. But then Bloody Jewel, she's the main one that has sack crew. She's probably going to have four crew that can be sacrificed at the altar, but she's going to be she has good speed, SLS, but she doesn't have any way to like get to this northeastern area quickly. So therefore, I think they should place a whirlpool here. And then it, it would make the enemy think twice about putting their home island there too. They might actually change. And then the other whirlpool probably up here with their last one. So I think, I think they'll do that. I think they'll not place a reef. They really wanted at least one reef, but I think it's going to be more important to get crew or get crew and ships out to the wild island area so they're gonna pop a whirlpool pass away a little out a little fire Go a little bit out there so we'll try that and now dragon fleet will place their fourth terrain 
and they're kind of intrigued by the Whirlpool placement. It's kind of obvious they expect to get placed here, which is what the Dragon Fleet was thinking. Now the Dragon Fleet might consider putting the enemy here, but I don't think it would help much. I don't know. It might help delay them a little bit. I mean, Ultra Abuse is also planning. They could have Bloody Jewel one action to hide in the fog, second action she gets to the Whirlpool, and then she can morph over here once they place another Whirlpool. So, yeah, they don't know. The Dragon Fleet doesn't know what Bloody Jewel is going to be doing, but I think the problem with the Dragon Fleet picking this to be the Ultra's home island, then Ultra is almost definitely going to place the enemy here, which just gives which just gives better Wild Island access to the Ultra Fleet overall. So I think based on that analysis, Dragon Fleet is still going to fully plan on putting Ultra Fleet here. And so based on that, they're probably going to do a Sargasso in between another pair of islands. Um, they don't want any reefs. They don't really want whirlpools. And I don't see any need for fog. I don't think they really want icebergs either. I think they're just going to go with five Sargasso Seas probably. So I think I might be able to fit one here. Can't go over the edge, but I don't know if this would really impede travel between the islands, but I might try that. Um, so if they go here, I don't think that's really going to... That's That sea lane is still going to be completely open. This one's mostly open too, but... Whatever. I think they're okay with that though. And then they'll probably place one there, the last one. Probably. Uh, Alright. So, final terrain placed by the Alter Fleet would be a Whirlpool. And I think since when they use Hidden Cove, they'll end up here. And then from there, they can dock at these more easily. So, I think they want the last Whirlpool closer to this one, that island, but also still within one move action of this island there. So therefore, they're gonna, they're gonna go like right in between, pretty much. That looks about right. And then last terrain overall, it's gonna be placed by the Dragon Fleet, and I think they're gonna, they're gonna do another Sargasso. I don't think they want it right in between because Hyena might go here and explore, possibly. So. Um, Maybe they could somehow fit it in here. That would be kind of crazy. I don't think they can fit it. Yeah, having to place it at least S away from everything is tough. Actually, wow, that could be it. That could be a nice placement. Yeah, that's S. Okay, but barely there, but yeah, it fits. It just barely fits at least S away from each of these things. So they're going to place their last Sargasso right there. Make it, make the sea lanes between wild islands more difficult okay that's a setup right there we'll see and i hope it comes into play <laughs> that took a while so all right so yeah we got three six nine ten crap so train placement done now we go to choosing home islands last player chooses the home island of the first player and no surprise dragon fleet picks southwest home island or the altar fleet we're gonna put Patagonia. Uh, I don't think about this. They're probably gonna. Yeah, I think that's fine. They could place her closer to the whirlpool, but yeah, you know what? They're gonna place her. Yeah, they're gonna place her right there. I think. Well, yeah, I guess that's fine. And then we're gonna place Bloody Jewel close to the whirlpool. She might go through it on the first turn, maybe. I think. Yeah, probably. And then High Peng is anticipating Hidden Coving. She'll be here, and then she could try to get to an island from there. I might pre-measure that later, but not quite yet, probably. Yeah, that's fine. And then they're gonna place the Dragon Fleet uh, kind of next door. And, oh, so the Rai is a proxy for the Patagonia in the Dragon Fleet. So, same ship type, same nationality. Should have a 2L cannon, but that's fine, so. So HMS Rai is the Patagonia for the kill that EPS fleet. So, and they're gonna 
stack up just like this pretty much. And ready to go, Angelica right there. And all right, that does it for the home island choices. Now we get to place in crew. So uh, there is a plus five. Both fleets have Patagonia with Robinson and Bratley, and they both have Micron face down. So due to the Bratley, both fleets get their plus five selections. Alter Abuse will go first, and they're gonna choose to bring in, these are all face down, of course. They're gonna bring in Hidden Cove and three one-point crew on the Bloody Jewel, Explorer, Oarsman, Oarsman. Uh, full fleets in the description on PSM list. And the, uh, the Dragon Fleet's gonna stick with their regular plus five choices. Um, pretty sure. There's different options they could go with, but especially going second, they wanna preserve combat capability on the Hyena. So you're gonna bring in Captain, Explorer, Oarsman, all English, all face down on Hyena. Start the game. So place those there. And then we get to uh, the treasure. And that'll be the last part of the setup here. So placing treasure is going to be the same as in the fleets. If you check them out in the description, so I'm not going to go into that. And you may have already seen their treasure distributions from other games in this uh, tournament that they played in. So the abandoned crew placed by the Ultra Beast fleet is an abandoned oarsman. 654 for the non-UTs and a bunch of nasty unique treasures for the, uh, the dragon fleet. Kill that UPS and then three fives. So I'll mix them up, four for island, and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, ready to go. Game one of uh, the second semifinals matchup for T3, tournament number three. Just clock is just to try to help me play a little faster, not take all day. So left clock, it's not in any condition. So uh, left clock for Ultra Abuse, right clock for uh, the Dragon Fleet, which corresponds to the home islands left, right? So uh, Ultra Abuse is first up and we're gonna, they're gonna stick with their hidden go plan, flip that face up, play it on the, uh, the high pang here. So she's gonna get flung out to the uh, nearest unexplored wild island, which is here. And they're gonna pre-measure where she wants to dock based on if she can get to one of these other islands uh, with her second action. Uh, so this is not an action, but she'll be able to redock and explore with her first action. And then, okay, looks like she can, uh, that's a close one. She can, I think she can just barely get there to this island if she measures from the starboard bow. So it's really close. Uh, so let's say she's over here. So I might as well move the ship just to make sure I know whether or not she can get there. So some very tight measurements, trying to avoid the Sargasso Sea. And okay, she can get here as well. So with the Whirlpool here, I think Bloody Jewel is going to go into. I think she's going to hit these two first. So yeah, yeah, she'll do that. So we're going to have her, she's going to dock like there with Hidden Cove. Now she's going to move L, S, S, revealing her Helmsman. And she's going to reveal the Explorer. And she doesn't need to reveal Black Bart yet, but she probably, well, she will on the second uh, action. So she redocks to explore, and we're gonna see what goodies we got. So this is a huge deal. Oh, they got the altar. Unreal. Okay. So first turn, first action, altar found. No negatives. This is crazy. They don't know about the negatives in the other fleet yet, but. To find none of those five is amazing luck. So they better they better capitalize on this and win. Um, yeah, this is where they really want a reef to hit Angelica on, but they'll figure something out. So, all right. So Markson's map. So alter will not be loaded. So alter the load. Do not load this treasure. Instead, place it face up on this island while docked this island. You may eliminate two crew. If you do on the next player's turn, you may choose to give actions to his or her ships. Or choose that he or she gets no actions at all. So, big deal there. So, um, so the altar is found. And now that the Dragon Fleet is kind of immediately <laughs> a little more knowledgeable about what the enemy fleet is doing. So, Marksman's map is placed on a high peng. And they're gonna, well, they can use that this turn. 
So they'll use that in a minute. Let me just, uh, I gotta finish the explorer action at least. They're gonna take the five. Uh, that, yeah, that's important actually. So they take the five and that fills her up on cargo. So they're gonna load the abandoned oarsmen immediately flipping it face up to turn it into crew. And so that doesn't take up space. So therefore they can load it. So, um, so whether or not that's legal, I have the house rule about um, abandoned crew being able to be flipped at any time to turn them into crew. So, because I think doing it otherwise is silly. So, so that's their first action. Redock and explore. Yeah, because they don't they don't want to use Black Bar to trade any anything away. Uh, they're they're okay with that island. They don't really need the Marksman's map, but but it could come in handy. So they're gonna use it right now. So this one says, once per turn, the ship may look at one face down cargo on any island. So they're gonna go ahead and take a peek at the island, the next island that we're planning on going to. Okay, they find maps of Alexandria. So that's another one they put in, one of the revealers. That one's designed to help find the altar faster if it's not you know, found on the first explorer. So. so there's no negatives here that they've seen yet. So they'll probably still go to that island. And the question now is how they're gonna work this altar. Yeah, this is gonna get complicated though quickly. This bloody jewel can't get to this island. She can whirl here and then move, but it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. I think they're gonna pre-measure. Bloody Jewel is gonna I'm just gonna flip her helms in. I don't know if they're gonna use it this turn. They probably will. So Bloody Jewel can either go through this whirlpool or go towards this altar island at LSS. Basically, she has the main four crew they want to sack to the altar. They're going to calculate how many turns it would take for her to get there. Actually, it'll take less turns if they use Micron on the Bloody Jewel, which is, I think, what they might do, actually. I think they're going to do that. It's kind of debatable from a logistics standpoint uh, what they should do, but I just realized I forgot to roll for the Isle of Fire, so or all three of them. So I got to roll for those because uh, they apply the beginning uh, at the beginning of his or her turn, the active player rolls. So, so I'll go clockwise. One, two, three. So we'll see if they get any sixes to eliminate coins. Nothing from the north. There's going to be a lot of rolling here. Nothing there. All right. No treasure eliminated from the volcanoes. So I think, yeah, like I was saying, I think they might use Micron and Bloody Jewel. So basically go through the whirlpool, which will end up here. And then... Her second action, L, S, S. It doesn't get her there, but High Peng can sack two of her crew in order to activate the altar and start messing up the enemy fleet. And then from there, next turn, Bloody Jewel can dock, and then they'll get a couple more turns of control from that. So this is interesting. This is gonna be an interesting game. I don't know if they can control the enemy long enough to, to make this work, but yeah, they're starting to... Uh, starting to really wish they had placed a reef instead of one of the three fog banks they initially placed. They had already placed all three by the time they realized they wanted whirlpools. And now, ironically, they might not need whirlpools quite as much as they expected now that they found the altar so fast, but, um, but whatever. So with no reef to put Angelica on, it might be harder to damage her than expected. I think they might actually put her in the path of the high peng because she does have the captain ability with black bart and uh so she could shoot she could move and shoot like hit put angelica here and then move and then shoot her on the way east they might try that <laughs> i think so it's pretty debatable the exact like stuff they should do i think they want to move bloody jewel close to the altar right now so, actually, I think they're just going to go in the regular route. I don't think they need the Whirlpool, because Whirlpool is one action to get here, second one get here, three actions to the island. Here, it's one, two, it's going to be three there. So there's no point in potentially losing a mast to the Whirlpool. So they're going to use Micron, and flip Micron, and the Bloody Jewel's Helmsman, use Micron right now on the Bloody Jewel. So she's going to be moving... Oh, SS. She'll get there. 
next turn, which is exciting. She's got four crew for two total turns of control at the altar. <laughs> and now the High Peng is going to do the deed, and she's going to sacrifice crew to the altar. The only question is which ones. Um, she's going to sacrifice the abandoned oarsmen for sure. She doesn't really want to sack the helmsman or the explorer, but she's got to pick one in order to control the enemy right now. So, because if they don't, Angelica's probably going to sink the high pang or something. So, they'll sacrifice the abandoned oarsman for sure. So he's out of the game. And for their second crew to sack at the altar, um, that's, a that's an ugly one. Yeah, they'd like more crew. I mean, the only way they get to this island is if, so L, S, L. Yeah, they don't get there without the helmsman. Either way, they're going to lose time. Well, next turn, let me think about it this way. Next turn, Micron will go to the high pang, because Bloody Jewel will use her one action to get there and sack crew to the altar. So with two actions, I think she should keep the Explorer, I guess. Because if either way, she needs two actions to get to this island. So if she uses two actions to get there, Right, well, I guess she could get there in, sorry, I, I misspoke, so she could get there in one. That's how I measure it, yeah. She could get there in one if she uses the Halton and then explore separately with the second action via Micron. Um, I think she wants to keep the Houndsman. It's a tough decision. Um, I think she'll keep the Houndsman. Yeah, I just have to make a decision. So there, she's gonna sack the Explorer as well, in addition to that abandoned Horseman she loaded earlier on the turn, and that activates the Altar of the Loa. So now they have complete control of the enemy fleet's actions for their first turn. Uh, and I think that's all the actions. Yeah, they've given out their three actions. Yeah, because Haipeng Altar is not an action. So it just is when docked, wild docked at this island. So, so Hidden Cove, one action for I Peng, two actions to Bloody Jewel. And uh, I think that's I think that's all they can do. So they're gonna turn it over. Well, before they turn over, they're gonna use Markson's map, essentially on the enemy turn as soon as it starts, but due to the timer, I'm just gonna do it now. They're gonna spy another coin in the east and find a four. So, so far, good island here, a four and maps of Alexandria. So I'm gonna turn it over and the Dragon Fleet is gonna roll for the Isles of Fire. So the far north one, it's three, nothing there. Need a six to eliminate a coin. Nothing in the northeast, far east. Whoops, five, nothing there. So no, no volcano eruptions. And now they would get their turn, but they don't really have a turn. <laughs> All their actions are controlled by the enemy. So I got to think about how this is going to work, what their best use is here. Um, let me just do a little pause just so I don't mess any of it up. All right, quick check of the code confirmed that uh, you can't use the altar to have ships shoot at uh, other ships in their own fleet, which makes sense. And they also can't look at face down cargo on the enemy ships. So Micron is still face down in the Dragon Fleet. And uh, so we'll see how they play this. And uh, abilities, the other player, the Dragon Fleet, they can still use abilities and they can still flip stuff face up, but if those abilities apply to actions, the other, the alter controller or alter user determines how those abilities are applied. So if Hyena flips her helmsman, they can use the plus S bonus however they, however they want, the alter fleet wants. So I think um, it's a little bit debatable, but I think they're gonna put the dragon on the way to this island because with Bloody Jewel coming here, they know they have control over the next player's turn as well. Um, yeah, so, and they know they kept the Helmsman, so they're gonna be able to get here without too much trouble. So High Peng is basically gonna end up like right here. So they're gonna use Angelica's action to fly her, or him, I think it's a she, uh, fly them right here. <laughs> so it looks like an ambush, but they're actually, just putting them right in the line of fire because then they're going to control the enemy's next turn as well. So they won't, even if, an, well, Angelica's definitely going to survive the attack from High Pang, but then she won't be able to, 
do whatever she wants next turn either. So all three of the first rounds of this game should be controlled by the Altar Fleet. So pretty nasty stuff. They really wish there were icebergs or reefs in play, but oh well. So Hyena, now they have to decide if they want to drop all the Hyena's crew off the home island, which I think they might do. Uh, they can't look at them. So I think they'd rather just get rid of them. Um, they don't want to dock her at the Altar Island. Uh, they want to dock her, they actually want to dock her at a different island, dump the crew, and then Bloody Jewel could pick up the crew and bring them back to the Altar. Because since the Altar is not in action, if they dump Hyena's crew here, just the act of docking will allow the other player to potentially activate the Altar before the crew are dropped off. So, because the Altar, it's not a free action, it's just like a UT effect. So it's not controlled. You can't deny another player the use of the Altar if they dock there, essentially. So, and the, the code actually clarifies that too. So, and then Patagonia, she has a face down English crew that the enemy can probably assume is Lord Micron. I mean, they have the same combo in their fleet. So they might unload Micron and have Patagonia sail away. I think that would be a really good idea. Uh, because then it would take a lot of time for them to get it back. Uh, and then uh, Angelica might uh, not be able to get two actions for the move and shoot, basically. So, yeah, since they can't flip it face up, if Micron was already face up, I think they could give an action to Patagonia and then use that to double up Hyena or Angelica. But since Micron is face down, and I don't think I don't think the enemy wants to reveal Micron. Because if they do, it allows them to sacrifice Patagonia's action, move the hyena more. And maybe hyena will end up going through whirlpools until she becomes derelict. So so they're gonna since they can't look at Micron or activate him, they're gonna use the free transfer. It's still a, uh, a free action. So since it's a free action, that's still an action, so it's subject to the altar rules. So they're going to unload Micron as a free action at the home islands of the Dragon Fleet, and then they're going to move Patagonia S and do the stern turn. They're basically going to have her head towards the Sargasso Sea to try to get stuck. So, And then Hyena. I think Hyena, they don't know what crew she has, so I think they're just going to dump them all. Oh, they can actually calculate if she can dock at an island. Let me figure this out. So they have three turns to get her to a non-alter island, but I don't think that's enough. Unless the enemy fleet reveals a helmsman, but I don't think they will. Because if they do, it would be to their detriment. Because then the helmsman would allow Hyena to dock at one of those wild islands faster. One of the non-alter islands. Basically one of the islands of fire. So that's one SLSS movement. And then a second doesn't get her there. She only gets to the whirlpool at three move actions with no helmsman revealed. And they can't count on a fourth turn of control, uh, at least not without sacking the High Pang's last two crew, which I doubt she'll ever want to do, Black Barton, the helmsman. So, based on that, I don't, they, they don't anticipate being able to use the hyena's crew uh, for altar sacrificial purposes. So as a result, they're going to use the free transfer and dump all the hyenas crew on her home island. And then they're going to move her away from the home island. So they might actually move her towards the altar island because Bloody Jewel, once she's sitting here, she can, uh, she can use an action. It's not an action to use the altar, like I said. So two turns from now she could shoot at the hyena while she's just sitting at the altar sacrificing crew the only problem is the timing so because i don't know ah uh, they can't yeah that's the tough thing they can't count on bloody jewel hitting enough times to dismaster sink the hyena in only a couple shoot actions yeah, she's gonna take she won't be in range this coming turn so let me fast forward basically so round two, Bloody Jewel gets here, docks like right here. Hyena would then be, so at the end of round two, she'll move into range. But then Bloody Jewel will only have one turn of shots on round three to shoot at Hyena. Round four, I believe the uh, altar abuse will be out of crew to sack at the altar. So therefore, 
uh, I don't think it's worth it for to put Hyena in range of the Bloody Jewels cannons because two shots at rank three is not going to be enough to take out Hyena. So I think therefore Hyena we're probably going to send her through this whirlpool. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, six S would get her to the whirlpool. The only thing I'm worried about that is if she gets sent to the north, my Peng might be able to hit her. But the Hyena, if they lose control of Hyena, once they run out of sack food, Hyena might be able to come through this whirlpool on round four, and then on round five, ram the, their own Patagonia. I don't know if we'll get to a round five in this game, but they're kind of wary of that. So, Hyena, I could just sail her out in the middle of nowhere. There's a big, there's a lot of space in the southeast. So they might just do that. Um, I don't think it's going to be easy to place Hyena in the high pangs way. I guess yeah, it's hard to anticipate the fast forwarding. Because second turn, high pang hits here, and then she starts going up here. I think by the time we get to round four, I don't know if high pang is going to be coming this way, maybe. She might just want to go home. I think they're just going to move Hyena out in the middle of nowhere. I don't think there's like a better way to do it. Because even on the third round of control, she flipped the whirlpool. Well, maybe she loses the mass, but once they lose control of her, it's harder to it's harder to get what you want out of the ship. So we're gonna just start moving her into the southeast corner. So, so those are the three actions, three full actions they give the enemy fleet. So I think that does it. There's no real abilities that the enemy can use. Um, yeah, because they wouldn't, they would never, like I said, they would never want to reveal Micron because then they could use it to have Hyena move twice, twice as many times and grind herself out on a whirlpool. So I think they're just going to end there. So, yeah. All right, so back to the altar fleet and we'll roll for the volcanoes first. So Isles of Fire rolls. Gotten a lot of fives for them, but no sixes yet. So five, three, Eastern one, nothing. All right. So no eruptions, and so now I'll go, go with the high pang first. Oh, they're going to use Martin's map right now. Just buy another coin here. Okay, now they find savage natives. So now they're, they didn't put that one in, of course. So they know the enemy contributed that one. That's the first negative UT they found out of seven coins seen total. Now they're kind of wary of negative ETs the other fleet placed. Savage Native says when revealed, will it be six? On one three, only the crew on the ship has the lowest point value. On a four through six, only the crew that has the highest point value. Another ship can load one more treasure only and put cruise natives face down the island. The ship must leave the island on your next turn. So what they like about their setup is they have Black Bar. So they have the island treasure trading ability. So they're probably going to try to, they can, it, they can explore with their second action, trade that away, hopefully get something like a coin, like a six or something in return. So I think they're they're still gonna go there. There is one more coin they haven't seen there, but it could be another negative, but I think they gotta risk it, especially because they can't they can't get to one of these islands. Um, even with SL, SL, they can't get to either of these islands with one action. And they need to, with no explorer, they need to get to an island right now, with one action in order to explore this turn. Because that turn timer is counting down. So that was one round of control over the enemy. They only have two rounds left, probably, uh, most likely. So, so my thing is going to head out. I'm just going to go east and go explore this island. But first, she's going to reveal Black Bart. So she reveals him to get her plus L bonus. So go reveal that. I'm just going to be. I'm just going to talk. Bart as possible. I'll Staying range basically. So she's gonna dock there. I'm gonna reveal Black Bart, Bartholomew Roberts, historical custom crew from Fire and Steel. He's got the captain ability, which allows the ship to get plus L speed, in this case, for the high pangs ability. So if she gets there with that bonus and the Helmson bonus combined, she's gonna open fire with a couple shots. So she's got a 3S and a 4S. So she's gonna open fire. On, whoops, 
on the uh, on the dragon here. So Angelica, not very accurate, but we'll see if it's going to put some heat on Angelica here. So, so we'll go. I guess I got to roll one at a time. It's different. So, so we'll go with the three S nothing, and then the four S cannon. Ah, so both miss. So nothing there. Not too surprising. Hopefully they'll get more chances at it. And I think they want to explore now before Bloody Jewel gets her second action. Actually, or her first action. No, I think I'll do Bloody Jewel now. I think. I can't trade. Can't trade for the altar because they would have to load it, but it can't be loaded. So now it's face up and known to all players. Not that they would want to trade for the altar anyway. I'm just thinking about how this could work logistically. Just want to make sure I get the order of operations right. Uh, very spied with the map. Got a five on the high ping. I do have two, they have one space open, which is not really enough either. Yeah, this could get, it's tough. You know, with no reefs to smash the enemy on, it might be tough for Alter to pull this out. Let's see. Shouldn't be too hard though. Just gonna, I think it's just gonna take a while. So, uh, I think I'll, I think I'll explore. I know what she'll have. Well, now let's do Blade Jewel first, because I don't know why she would ever not do what she's about to do. She pretty much has to go here to maintain control of the enemy. I think she'll dock the north side. She might be the ship that explores here. So, and then take, yeah, either way, she's probably going to try to pick up a coin from one of the three other wild islands and then take the whirlpool to get home later in the game after the sack crew and all her shenanigans are done. So she's going to move LSS dock there. Alter does not require an explore action to use, but it doesn't really matter anyway. So she's going to sacrifice two crew to the altar. So she has plenty of sack crew. She's going to sacrifice two oarsmen to the altar of the Loa. <laughs> so now they've established a second round of control over the enemy actions. And for their final action of the turn, Micron is going to be used to give the Ipeng an explore action. So I'm just going to check this out. And we're going to check out what they get. We know three of them. And oh, they got lucky with the last coin. And it is a six. So they're getting real lucky with these neat treasures. They don't want the Savage Natives. Uh -huh. So they're going to trade that away. So they, that would happen first. Face down, absolutely revealed in a second. But they would trade first, and they have to load whatever they get in return. Um, they're going to trade the Savage Natives up here because they anticipate High Peng visiting this island next. And Bloody Jewel will have no crew that the natives can kill by the time she gets up here. Her crew will be gone. So they're going to trade the natives up here. I'm just going to do a, a die roll one through four left to right to determine what they get. In return basically so six i should re-roll and a three so we'll get the third coin from the left here keep those there and oh my god the luck continues they get a five the only problem there is they have to load that so they can't load can't load the six but well they can they're just gonna have to get rid of their helmsman but they will, because they're going to have the winning gold. They're going to have the winning gold there. So I'm going to put the five on the deck plate right now. So the Peng now has two fives, and they have access to a six. This is crazy luck to not get a negative in return, and uh, also just to have the winning gold between these first two islands. All right, so now we, now we would apply maps of Alexandria. It's all treasure on Wild Island's place, place face up for the remainder of the game. So yep, so now we'll see the negatives and this will really help the uh, ultra abuse know what treasures to expect next game because they're seeing some of these negatives that the enemy placed for the first time in this tournament so in the northeast we have pirate globe which is one of the revealers missionary wolves and a five so two negatives there and then here of course we have the savage natives and then we also have plague and regular natives from revolution and a five so yeah so pretty nasty stuff so originally, there were two negative UTs at each of these islands, and then 
if the savage native started here. So now we have all five negatives between those two islands. So really lucky treasure distribution for altar abuse. Could not really have gone much better. This is getting crazy. Even on, on this recent roll, they just got um, they just got that good coin instead of the plaguer natives in that trade. So it was a 50-50 shot they would have one of those negatives in that treasure trade that they would have to deal with. So insane luck by ultra abuse. Yeah, they went they went first. They got their terrain roll. The Isles of Fire haven't eliminated any any coins they would want to keep in play. This is this is kind of extreme luck, but we'll take it. So um so now she's gonna drop her helmsman for the six, basically, because I think doing otherwise would be bad. They're just they're trying to win now with high pangs load, basically. So they're not gonna take the four. They have to take the treasure they received. And um which is at five. That was the second five. Dropping the helmsman as part of the explore action frees up a third space and allows them to take um, a six. So, so now she has 16 gold, which is more than half the starting build or starting gold. So if High Peng gets home and unloads that, they'll win. So we're looking pretty, pretty good right now. A lot of, a lot of good luck here. <laughs> That luck is helping them overcome kind of a slightly awkward like home island slash wild island thing where they were far from the wild islands to start and got a kind of a iffy home island location, but it's all working out now. So um, I guess that's their third action. So I think that's that's it for them. We'll turn it over to the Dragon Fleet, who's not really, I don't think they're going to be really able to play the game today, <laughs> or at least not in game one. Uh, but they'll roll for Isles of Fire. So north, northeast, northern, eastern. There's only one. Oh, okay. So a six is rolled for the eastern island. And in this case, you can't make it random because there's only one coin. So that four gets obliterated via the lava flows. And now they would have their turn, but the enemy controls it. So they won't be able to do anything. <laughs> so. Alter Fleet is going to move Hyena farther southeast. Patagonia is going to take a long trip with this Sargasso, trying to keep her out of range of docking at her home island. And then Angelica, not to anticipate where High Peng is going to go. So High Peng needs to get home within the next two rounds before the Dragon Fleet gets their first turn during round four. I think she'll be good either way, because without Micron on it for Angelica, I don't think the enemy will be able to intercept them with shots anyway. So as long as High Peng gets home uh, through the first half of round four, like their turn on round four, the alter turn, they'll be fine. So I'm just trying to anticipate uh, where she should go. I think the Whirlpool will be faster. Let's check out what we got. So she, she doesn't have the Helmsman, so she only has LS LSB now, so that's one action. LS. It looks like it's going to take her three actions to reach the whirlpool, but that's still round four, so they're good. Yeah, because it's going to be two actions on round three to get here, whirlpool, and then home with the second action on round four. So they they should be good to go. So I'm just going to have uh, Angelica basically move right here. So she's within range of the high pangs next move action. So pretty simple actually. Uh, I think that's really all they all they want to do to the enemy fleet. So turn it over, roll for the volcanoes. Whoops. So nothing. And then that one, nothing. And the eastern one is out of coins. So no need to roll for that one. No treasure to eliminate. And bloody jewel. It's gonna sack her final two crew to the altar, Helmsman and Explorer. They're sacrificed in a ritual to control the enemy fleet. <laughs> so this is wild. This coin is crazy. It's altered. <laughs> but of course, I already knew it was broken from like a decade ago, but it's just wild to see it in action consistently. So yeah, high paying, wow, she's barely range, but 
Yeah. Okay. She gets both in range. She's going to shoot Stern to bow. Uh, so the 4S is going to be first. Black Bar, she's still got the captain ability. I'll do uh, Black Die for the 4S, Red for 3, 3S, basically. So, okay. So I do get a hit, finally. So, Angelica, the loser still chooses what's eliminated. So just going to take out this, like, spine part. So that's eliminated. So we finally have a, a shot that hits. And now Micron is going to give his second action to Hai Peng, of course. And she's going to move L, S, L towards the Whirlpool. And they're going to turn it over. We're going to roll. It's going to roll both at once. Black for north. Okay, so the red one is northeast. So random treasure is limited. It's going to go left to right. One through four. So we roll five and six. So... Pirate Globe is eliminated. The random volcano eruption. Not a big deal. Not expecting the island to get explored in the first place. So now the enemy uh, fleet is controlled once again. So it's just about over. This is just alter domination. And Angelica, she's going to be, I don't know, she's just going to put her on a Sargasso. Doesn't matter really. Um, so, not stuck, whatever. All right. Yeah, there's not much else for them to, to do here. So, turn it over. Black die for North Volcano on the Isles of Fire Rolls. Nothing. And Bloody Jewel, no crew to sack, but it won't matter. My Peng is headed home. And the Whirlpool roll doesn't really matter. She'll just lose a mast. Um, which she does. Actually, nah. Screw that. She'll stay healthy. Lose the marks in the map UT because she doesn't need it. Micron, second action. High Peng gets home, unloads 16. And that does it for game one. So 16 to nothing. Dominant victory. Kill that UPS did not get to play the game. So this is what happens when the altar abuse gets exactly what they want. So they found the altar on the first island and they immediately started abusing it control the enemy fleet for all three full rounds of play so the enemy fleet was completely helpless and like i said basically couldn't play the game so this is how broken that unique treasure is and uh, this really shows how effective it can be in competitive play if the if the alter abuse fleet gets some luck they're basically able to just dictate the outcome from start to finish so obviously they had all the luck in the world uh, no no negatives they didn't even need to trade here because if they found one negative at the first island, they'd have to trade. They'd want to trade it away, but then they might get a different one in return. So, so they had all the luck here. They had all the luck here. The maps of Alexandria is amazing because now it lets them know that they're probably going to see these UTs next game. I don't think they're going to change their distribution much because um, if they include eliminators like the Karmic Idol and Paratic Codex, uh, it's just going to take out the altar, so they can't really... They're just going to have to rely on a bit of luck and Black Bart to trade away negatives. Because um, they can't risk knocking out the altar. That's why they don't want to use Pandora's Box either, to potentially bring in an altar the Loa. If they don't find it on the first island, but they find Pandora's Box, then the enemy might include a Karmic Idol or something. So, especially now, because now the Dragon Fleet, they do take this knowledge in the second game. So, so they probably would be wary about the altar. They might even, there's a chance they're going to swap like savage natives for a karmic idol, maybe to try to knock out the altar. Um, they might try that. They don't want to knock out their negatives, but we'll see. Uh, they might try it, especially if they're going second. I think they might try that uh, just so it's harder for the enemy fleet to use the altar the whole game. So cause then if they, if they can't trade it away, the idol would wipe out the face up altar the Loa. So. So yeah, and then they had the good trading luck too. The Alter Fleet, trade away Savage Natives, get a good coin in return, drop the Helmsman for the six, and you got three coins you need. The three coins in play that'll that'll get them the quick win. So pretty amazing game. And uh pretty pretty ridiculous actually. <laughs> Everything went the Alter Fleet's way. They didn't really face any any trouble at all. So that'll that'll probably change uh in the series. Can't expect this luck to, to hold in any other games. So 
we'll see what happens. That's game one. Ultra Abuse is up in the series now, one and nothing. And uh, get started on game two. So thanks for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the affiliate links if you want to help out the channel or my site, Pirates of Ben, where I post the battle reports for pretty much all the games I play, as well as a lot of other uh, information about the game. And beyond that, thanks for watching. I'll see you for more games of T3.